hear the word no. I hear the word no everywhere. You say, oh, no rain, drought, no food, no this, no that. Everywhere people are suffering. No, 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 no. So please give me the blessing that I may in my future lives never meet with the situation where the word no will come to me. The other one he had asked, two, uh, two prayers he had. The other one he said, Lord, please give me the blessing that I may never know from where food comes. Because in this famine, no food, no food, thousands of people are dying. I don't want to know from where it comes and all that. It's such a painful experience. That is how this Pacheka Buddha, he came to know his emotions were very much, uh, he was tremendously moved by compassion and, and he was so utterly innocent, a prince. He said, all I tathastu, let it be so, so be it, he said. And that's hard. Now in this I when the mother sent the empty bowl, the devas became aware. He says, look, Anuruddha has this Purva Punya. This tremendous Punya he earned from the past that he may never experience a state of negation, no, no-ness. He, he will always experience great prosperity and luxury and all that. Never, never no-ness deprivation. He will never experience any form of deprivation and so on. So they fill it up with their uh, supernormal powers. They fill it up and send. So Anurdha here with his brothers, with his uh, cousins, they all had a nice time. Three times he got, you see, he uh, after finishing, this is the fourth time he's getting. After eating, it was so very delicious and filling. They said, okay, that's enough now. Can't eat anymore. So Anuruddha went home, and when his cousins went back to their own homes, and he told the mother, Mother, do you really love me? Or you have been cheating me? He was the most beloved son, obviously, two sons, and he was the youngest. The mother said, look, my dear, I love you as a one-eyed man will love his one eye. Or I love you as I love my heart, like my own heart. What's the problem? Why are you so uh, cut up? The mother asked. He said, why? All these days you have never cooked for, have you had... You didn't tell the cook to, uh, you see, cook for me no, uh, no cake. Only now you have sent some no cake. And I ate that no cake. It's a wonderful one. I've never eaten that. Now in future I am not going to eat no cake. Any other cake apart from no cake. The mother, now she was a very wise person. She didn't know what to do. She thought this, my child, it was no child, it was a young fellow. So he says, my son is so very punyavanta, kata haro it is called. haro. he has made some kind of satya kriya by which his bhav becomes real. And the bhav becomes real by the power of his punya karma. Tremendous, the good deed that he has gave, it is like uh, giving his life. That was the only meal he had left, and a small one at that, during that famine period. It's like offering the life itself, and that is the power of that punya. So she said, yes, my son must be very punyavanta and all that. She asked the, uh, you see, cook, he said, where did you, you won't see in that uh, uh, empty bowl if there is something left. As soon as you open the bowl, my goodness, filled with the same type of cook. It, it seems still he remained a monk, 
until he became a monk, he, he ate only that. It happened to him. Now this is the hidden power behind action. The power behind punya. A spiritually uh, vitalized action where it amounts to giving life itself. So now, this is the other aspect of this uh, story today. It is going to be all stories. Now, on one hand he had so much of punya and all that. On the other he was a complete simpleton. Complete ignoramus. He was very, very innocent of everything in the world. So anyhow, when King uh, Sudodhana had promised that 1,000 Kshatriya princes must, uh, you see, must uh, be comp uh, give company to Dharma Raja uh, Gautama. So uh, these princes were asked. Hey, you think you are not Sakyan? You think you are something different? Every family has uh, given one, and you did. Uh, so his brother Anur, uh, his Mahanama was the elder brother, eldest brother. He went to him. He says, "Look, brother, from our family, nobody has become a monk. Well, whereas in all the families they have, and they are not only monks; they are all holy monks." Enlightened beings, arahats, they have become. It will be a great shame if we don't. Either you become or I will become. He said, what is this monk thing? <laughs> Anuruddha asked, asked the brother, he says, what is this monk? This uh, renunciation. He says, you see, a monk is when you have to cut your beard. You cut your hair. You only wear a robe. You can, you can have only one set of robe. That's all. None of these jewelries that you are putting on, none of them. And you have to live on alms food that people give you. So he described monk's life and that frightened him. He said, no, no, no I can't. You see, I, am, I, I enjoy my life. Here. Let me be what I am. He said, okay, then I'll become a monk. You look after the estate. Father is old. Now you have to look after the estates. We have got huge, we have, uh, you see, uh, agro industries and um, agricultural operations going on throughout the year. He said, What is that? Management of uh, uh, estate and all that? How is that? He met, I mean, in great detail, he did, described what it means to run a huge industry agro industry and agricultural operations of all kinds. He said, my goodness, throughout the year I have to do this? Clear? He said, no, no, you better do it. It's okay, I'll become a monk. So he went to his mother and said, mother, please give me permission. I want to join my other brothers who have all become Bhantes. Venerable monks, Bhante. So, mother said, No, you are my uh, dear son, my darling sub boy, I can't give you permission. So he pestered her, he said, But I can't look after all this uh, estate, my estate, and all that. No, you must give me permission. Once, twice, thrice, then the mother said, Come on, let me trick him. She said, Okay, if you are. Uh, cousin, who is now elected to be the Yuvaraja Bhadiya, if he agrees to go with you, okay, I will allow you. So he went to Bhadiya and said, Bhadiya, come on, let us go. At least for my sake, you, for goodness sake, come on up. He said, no, 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 I have got this responsibility. I have just been elected. And he said, come on, election or no election, you come on. And said, he pestered him. And he said, all right, after seven days we'll go. So that is how they left. So all the six of them, including Ananda and all that, they left. Anuruddha. Now, they went along with their servant, who was actually their barber, Upali. 
and up to the border they were taken in a big procession because it is a great uh, deed of heroism people thought. So they, in the border they uh, removed all their jewelries and this royal apparel, very expensive clothes, all that sort of thing and gave it to Upali said you have it and this will look after you for the whole life. Now Upali took those bundles, six bundles and he had to go back. On the way he said, my goodness, look at this princess. Just as people will throw away a lump of spit and never look at it again, these princes have given up all that luxury and richness, all that wonderful life. Just like spit, they have spit it out and become monk, become zero. So what am I? After I am nothing. And if I take all these big jewelries and all this sort of thing and they, in the city people will think that I have got those monks killed and I have robbed them, they will finish me also. So having this in mind, what he did, he took out every bit of all those jewelries and clothes, everything, hung them on a tree and made an announcement saying that may anybody who wants to have it, it is his. May he have it, I give it in dana. Then he returned, went to Abba, you see, went back quickly and joined uh, this group. They had put on a upasaka dress of one, uh, just one cloth, you see, and uh, angavastra, this two. So, uh, he joined, they said, hey, why have you come? Where are all those things? He said, this is what I have done. I also want to become a monk. They were so impressed. He says, my goodness, this fellow has done a great thing. Okay, we Sakyans are proud people. We'll make him senior to us when we go to Bhagavan. So they reached and asked the Buddha, Lord, please ordain him first, make him senior to us, so that we'll have to show him respect. Buddha knew all this, so they became monks like that. Now here you are, the potency behind action. Here are our princes, living a princely life of luxury, total ignorance about worldly sufferings and this and that. Now they renounced. And then all of them became, now Bhadhyaya became an Arhat after a time. Anuruddha became another Arhat. And with tremendous supernormal power of Dibba Chakku. Ananda became uh, a Sotapanna and a great, uh, he became the uh, lifelong companion of Bhagavan Buddha. And he, he was like a tape recorder who recorded every word of the Buddha, the entire Tipitaka. And today we have the word of the Buddha because of His grace, because of Him. He read, a, he, uh, in the first Sangayana, He uh, recited the entire teaching, verbatim as it came from the words of the Master. Such tremendous spiritual giants, Bhago, he became Arhat, a Vipassana, Abba. he took to Vipassana and became Arhat, Kivila also. Only Devadatta, he could not get anything, but he developed what is called this um, Lokya Iddhi, worldly supernormal, this uh, psychic powers. That also out of frustration and uh, he became al ultimately, it was so horrible that he wanted to kill the Buddha many times and failed and he died a most miserable thing. Now about Devadatta, this Gatha is all about Devadatta. I have told you the, you see the potency in uh, good action. There is also the potency in bad action. So the life of Devadatta shows that very, very clearly indeed. 
and today we don't have the time. So next, on the next discourse, we'll, uh, you know, give you the entire story of how an evil action can be so terrible indeed, so powerful indeed. Evil is as powerful as good. It is because of that beings are all caught up in this world. Now you say, these ministers, you see, they loot us. They take the vote from us. They, they come and touch our feet and say, En pa vote kuri pa mahanu bhava anta. Give me vote mahanu bhava. And then once they get the vote, they kick us out. So there you are, you, you, uh, you say these are all you know, very ungrateful people and all that. They do all kinds of horrible things, yet they enjoy such opulence. How come? So they say, no, no, this is the world, and only bad things will work, no good things don't work. So many people don't have any faith in the power of a good action. They say, no, corrupt ways are the only best way to get everything done. If you don't have corruption, you see, you can't get anything done. You go to any office, you'll have to grease the palm of all those clerks and officers and everybody. So the, the evil, you see, evil deeds are becoming so widespread because they don't know the power of goodness and the destructive power of evil. If only they know this, the powers both of evil and good, one destructive and the other very constructive, very uplifting. Anuruddha, such an ignorant young prince, becomes an arahat of the highest order. Now, next time we will continue with the rest of the story. May the blessings of Bhagavan Buddha, his teaching and Sangha surround your lives with wisdom and well-being. May you know the power of your actions and lead a good life and enjoy the best from life. May you all be happy.